Welcome, bike nerds, to another edition of an old person talking about a new bike. This is the new 2024 Rocky Mountain Instinct A30. I'm going to tell you about the Instinct in general and what has happened with this new Instinct because it's a brand new model for 2024. And then I'm going to go over the details of this specific bike, the A30, the middle of three aluminum versions of the new Rocky Mountain Instinct. So if you're a bike nerd and you want to learn about this new bike, or if you're considering this as a new bike, let me take you through the bike and by the end you'll understand the specifications, the changes, things that might matter to you and things that might not. So this is the Instinct A30. So first some information about the Rocky Mountain Instinct. This is a 140 millimeter rear travel, 150 millimeter travel fork on this bike, which puts it square in the middle of a classic trail bike. And by trail bike, I mean a bike that is designed as much for the climbs as it is for the descents. This A30 is the middle of three different aluminum versions with the first price point being $31.99, that's Canadian, this one being $39.99 Canadian, and then going up to $55.99 on the A50. Above these aluminum models, there are six different versions of the carbon framed version. This is a completely new bike for 2024, although the frame silhouette looks very similar to previous models. The geometry has gotten a, a modernization treatment and another new sort of a feature has been added to this as far as additional adjustability. So this is going to be amongst one of the most adjustable mountain bikes on the market. The geometry has gotten a slacker head tube angle, a steeper seat tube angle, its reach, which is essentially that sort of horizontal distance there, has actually reduced a tiny bit, um, but still very similar to the previous one. Um, but because of that very slack head tube angle now, the wheelbase is almost two centimeters longer on the same size bike. So the bike is basically a more stable version than the previous. The kinematics of the rear suspension has also been changed and I watched a couple reviews today. Today is the first day that this bike came out and so there are a few uh, media sort of sources talking about actually riding the bike and with the kinematic changes there is supposed to be a little bit more mid-stroke support while still being a very active climber and a really good cornering bike, good descender. Uh, one of the other changes we now on this rear shock, if you can see that, we now have a ride four, not a ride nine adjustment, which is basically just a simplification of this little flip chip that's at the back end of the uh, rear shock. The rear end still has adjustable chain stays, so that is a flip chip that, depending on which way it's flipped, will give you 10 millimeters of chain stay adjustment. The big new change for this is on this headset here. Shipped, the bike comes in a neutral position, but it also comes with an adjustable headset cup. And that isn't for head tube or, yeah, head tube angle. It is basically a reach adjustment. So with that different cup, you can basically go five millimeters longer or five millimeters shorter than what this stock setup has. Beyond that, we see on the carbon version that they actually have a down tube storage system, but as we can see on this alloy version, this does not have that down tube storage. So I personally don't think down tube storage is that big of a deal. It's a bit of a gimmick, but some people seem to get really hung up on it. So if you get hung up on that, Maybe this isn't going to be the model for you, but for the rest of us who realize that a tiny hip pack can carry way more than any down tube can, and that uh, down tube storage isn't a big deal, you probably won't care too much about that. I would say one of the big surprises for me was the fact that this is 
a 35.2 pound bike in this size medium. So it is kind of hefty, but along with that, I would say that it definitely sort of conveys a message with the frame shape, the profile, um, all of this extra welding here and down here. It really gives me the impression that this is a bike that's built to be quite tough. However, in the carbon versions, they apparently reduced the weight from the previous model, which is pretty amazing because the Instinct has always been known as a fairly light bike. So that is sort of the quick what an Instinct is. And what I will do next is go over the details of this Instinct A30. And you will see all those details that I spoke of a little bit more closely, as well as descriptions of the parts on this bike and where things um, might matter for you. So that will be our next stop is specifications. So before I get into the specifications on this A30, I just want to show you those headset cups that I mentioned before. The bike ships with neutral headset cups, meaning that those holes are in the center of the cup. And then these are the adjustment cups, which mean that they can be run forwards or backwards, giving you an extra five millimeters or reducing your reach by five millimeters. So in addition to the Ride 4 and the adjustable chain, chain stay length, this bike has a pile of adjustment to basically make it ride the way you want it to or to fit the bike a little bit between sizes. So um, kudos to Rocky Mountain and to those people who might look at a Rocky Mountain and think, um, why are these a bit more expensive? Each one of these details of adjustment here, they take extra engineering, extra cost, and they really do basically provide you more ways that you can make the bike really work for you, which I personally think is worth the dough. In Canada here too, Rocky Mountain has a really strong cult following. And so we tend to find that uh, the brand means a lot to people, which uh, basically makes it worth that much more money. So on this A30, we have a Shimano Dior 1x12 drivetrain and with a proper Dior cassette, meaning that that cassette goes from 10 to 51 teeth. We have for rims, WTB 30 millimeter wide rims. And those are running on a Shimano hub. So Shimano hubs are not known for having really high engagement. So this sort of free play before your hub catches is just part of the Shimano hub program. The one upside when you typically see, um, especially if we're talking about price point stuff, that little bit more gap and even that sound you hear, that will typically mean that the poles that are catching the hub inside are going to be a larger sized pole and so you have less chance of failure um, if you've got a little bit of a, a lesser engagement type of a hub, if that makes any sense. We've got some really nice built-in chainstay protection, really, really uh, beefy looking horse link style suspension here. Horse link, of course, meaning that we have a link just ahead and below the rear axle, and then your single pivot, which is just hidden behind um, the chain ring here. So horse link is known for being efficient, having good um, suspension characteristics, basically of being efficient as well as having minimal uh, effect from braking. So a good suspension design. Tires on here are a 29 by 2.4. That is one thing I should mention as I talk about this being 29 on a medium. In size, extra small and small, this bike is available in a 27.5 um, front and rear bike. And then small through extra large are all available in 29. So in a size small, you actually have an option of wheel size on this bike. So if you want something a little bit more playful, you can go 27.5. If you want to concentrate on faster rolling and rollover ability, you go 29. Going back to these details here, Rocky does a nice shop job with this um, 
what is the Canadian Shield, I think they call this thing. Basically, it's a plastic shield which just stops gunk from collecting in here. And hidden in behind is where things like your uh, rear brake line and your rear shifter cable come out of the frame and then disappear back into your chain stays and then coming back out in a spot like that or in a spot like that if we're talking about our brakes. Cranks on this bike are Shimano Dior. Of importance on these cranks is the fact that Rocky has really paid attention and they're actually going with 165 millimeters on the extra small and small and then going up to 170 for medium up through extra large. So, so this is definitely paying attention to current trends of shorter cranks and nice to see that they're actually extending the shorter crank theory to those smaller size bikes and going down to 165. This is one of the first bikes I think that has uh, actually sort of done that sort of a detail. Rocky is using a one-up top chain guide here. One thing to note on these Shimano cranks is I believe that that is a steel narrow wide chain ring on there. The only reason I mention that is A, it's going to last really long being steel, um, but also from having ridden on some of these cranks, you can in some cases get a little bit uh, more noise out of the, the chain on the chain ring, uh, especially if you're kind of pushing the angle, if you're down at the small end of your cassette or the big end of your cassette, you can just get the occasional popping noise and it'll take a little bit longer for that popping noise to go away because your steel chain ring is going to take that much longer to uh, to wear some of the sharp edges off. But just a strange note, if you get a little bit of popping on a steel chain ring on a narrow wide, that seems to be a somewhat normal sort of a deal. We come back up looking at these details. This link is a little bit uh, changed from the previous version. Uh, looking a little bit cleaner and a little bit uh, drilled out with this machined out section here. The tubing here looking a little bit um, fatter than the previous version while the top tube looks a little bit slimmer from the side profile but is actually pretty robust when we look at it from the top. The seat post on here is an Xfusion Manic post and the previous versions of these would have had the Rocky Mountain Tuny drop post. Um, basically the same sort of quality no matter which you go. There is almost no such thing as a bad dropper post anymore so I don't think it's a thing to get too excited about and I would even say I prefer this post to some of the uh, Fox products. Partially because the clamp size on here um, gives us at least a little bit of room on the rails to adjust the saddle back and forth if you wanted to do anything. For the saddle we have a WTB Volt and I believe this is a 142 mit width saddle, probably the most popular saddle on the market, both popular from manufacturers putting them on bikes and for people actually loving that as a seat post. I will do the quick pop-up of the post a nice solid top out, not the fastest uh, dropper in the world, but these Manix are quite good, quite reliable posts. Getting to the rear shock on here, we have this RockShox Deluxe Select RT. So basically that means that we're talking about a relatively simple shock, there's no piggyback, and it means that we do have a dial at the top here to go from open to uh, basically a soft lockout. It's an air shock. There's our uh, valve for, yeah, our valve for basically adjusting the air pressure to match your body weight. And then in here we have rebound adjustment. So it does all of the things that a good shock should do as far as being adjustable for spring tension. It gives you a soft lockout, not that you should need it. Um, and then rebound adjustment to just uh, make sure that the shock is behaving in a way that matches with the air pressure that you're going to put in there. We have a single set of water bottle mounts on the down tube. The bottom of the down tube has a generous amount of this 
rubber padding so that basically is going to act as a shuttle guard up top here and then a little bit of a rock guard as we get down to the bottom. Heading over to the fork, so I mean looking just above the fork, remember that that head tube angle is now into the sort of 64 degree range. So that is pretty darn slack for a trail bike and from the reports that I've seen, especially from Connor at Biker's Edge, um, it sounds like he loves the way that this bike rides overall, but especially on the descents. So the geometry changes seem to be um, meeting with a lot of approval. Uh, and I can't say that I have any arguments to find with what uh, Rocky Mountain has chose to do as far as head tube angle or seat tube angle or geometry adjustments. The fork that's on here is a RockShox Gold 35, so that name just means that we've got 35 mil stanchions, which means we aren't going to have a noodley fork that wants to do a bunch of flexing. And it gives us uh, a fairly basic but still an air uh, air spring, we get a compression adjustment, and we get rebound adjustment, as well as having, of course, through axles. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody at this sort of level. One surprise, I would say, as I look through the specs on this bike, is the fact that we have these dissectors. That's not that surprising, but the fact that both front and rear tire are running on XO tires. I would have thought with the capability that this bike um, is basically telling us that it's going to be designed to go fast and hard on downhills that either both or at least the rear tire would go with an XO plus casing just to get a little bit more tire strength under us. But tires tend to be a thing that um, basically are going to reflect your local trails and your riding style quite a bit so it's hard for a company to basically put on tires that everybody's going to love. Um, if they put Minions on this bike with XO Plus or Double Down, I'm sure somewhere in the world, um, like down in the desert, people would be saying, why are you putting these huge tires on here? All we need is dissectors and yeah. So tires, hard to judge a bike by tires, but for our part of the world, I would think that there's going to be a number of people who will choose to put a Minion DHF on the front and if they stick with a dissector after they wear this thing out they will put a dissector XO Plus or Double Down on the rear. As we look at more components on here we see the Shimano name on that lever and we also see a long lever blade and then we see a caliper that has the kind of figure eight shape to it, meaning it's got four pistons. That means that these are the MT420 brakes, which means four piston, but not servo wave. If you look around the internet, you'll see a number of reviews on this bike and the people who are uh, knowledgeable enough to be knowledgeable will actually give these a pretty good report for being a decent enough brake. So I don't think that there's any weaknesses really on this bike for being four grand. You can buy it, you can ride it, you can ride it hard. And if you start to have any issues, you can upgrade, but there's nothing on here where you kind of look at Rocky Mountain and wonder what the heck were these guys thinking. Heading back down, we've got a nice large front rotor and not as large rear rotor. So that's a 203 rotor on the front, a relatively cheap um, attached by center lock, not six bolt. Uh, Shimano rotor on the front and the same thing in a 180 rotor on the rear. You can see that adjustable chainstay thing there. The beefiness of that horse length design. From the other side, you can see where this main pivot is and the fact that that brake line basically goes through the frame, comes out, and then into the chain stay there and then popping out a few inches further down. Um, seems pretty complex having a, a brake line coming and going out of tubes that much, but from the mechanics in the shop, I haven't heard too many grumbles about actually running the, uh, the cables or brake lines on here. Looking from the back here, we can see that the back or the bottom of that seat stay on the drive side has some 
uh, rubber protection so that will help you to not be chipping paint too much from your chain bouncing around um, and also keeping things quiet. There's some more details of that rear shock setup. This fork. The handlebars on here are a Rocky Mountain branded handlebar. The stem, every single size, comes with a 40 millimeter long stem. The grips are ODI grips, so that's a nice detail that they aren't sort of no-name, terrible feeling grips. I think most of us know that ODIs are known for being quite a high quality grip with good quality rubber, so it's going to be fairly comfortable. So that is the new Rocky Mountain Instinct A30, a $4,000 trail bike. I would suggest having a look at a whole bunch of the reviews to get an idea on its actual ride characteristics. Um, I quite like getting to do these reviews because what we often see from the media is that they will end up testing out pretty high-end carbon versions of this bike and they also don't actually tell you or show you about any of the details that I've been showing you. So hopefully this has been useful. Combine this with checking out some of the ride reviews. Um, Biker's Edge, I mentioned Connor earlier. Um, I've met him, he's a decent dude, and I think he does an amazing job of his bike reviews. So maybe check that one out. And otherwise, if you're in the Cochrane, Alberta area, stop by. We have this in stock. We have a carbon one in stock at the moment now, this being the first day these bikes were just released, and we're expecting a whole bunch more. So drop by, have a chat with us. We can tell you, show you, I'm sure even more about this bike, but hopefully this was useful. If you like this sort of uh, coverage about bikes, please consider subscribing, like the video, leave us a comment if there's anything about this bike that you do or don't specifically like. Uh, always interested to see people's comments. Thanks so much, cheers.